everybody. Welcome back to the Tipsy Ghost. We're your tipsy hosts, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hey, guys. Hi. So I remember last month we played that game where we made like ABC stories. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> One of us sounds more excited than the other. <laughs> I How the dark see. was dark. I stand behind that. Zebras have stripes. <laughs> yes. Why is it me that says all the weird stuff? <laughs> so I'd like to do it again. Okay. A tiger ran towards the lake. Why are you laughing already? I was laughing because when I started a sentence with a... Da, 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 you said, that's not how you start a sentence. <laughs> I just asked for complete sentences, okay? There will be no such thing. So a, ta- a tiger, what? Ran towards the lake. Beware, the antelope said to its children. Cautiously, he tiptoed around. Jeez, this is a big lake. Hold on, Wait, what? <laughs> he D. said. You're on D. D. Oh. <laughs> we skipped a lot of letters there. <laughs> Don't turn around, lion. There's a ghost. We were with a tiger. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't turn around. <laughs> Wrong creature. Maybe the tiger is talking to the lion. Okay. A yeah, lion yeah. has entered the chat. Oh, okay. He walked up to the lion. <laughs> he was at the lake, yeah. I get it. Okay. And now there's a ghost. Oh, okay. Uh, now there's a ghost? Okay. F. No, E. D. No, I know. E. I know what letter I'm on. Well, makes one of us. <laughs> Everyone, look out. There's a ghost. Said the antelope. 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 <laughs> I introduced antelope into the chat. So Wait, Noah's Ark a- over here. <laughs> I feel like a was- lion, a tiger, a ghost, a ghost and an antelope. And an antelope. <laughs> I introduced antelope on letter B. Get with it. Four friends hang out by the lake. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Jeez, what a big lake. Oh, thank yeah, God you get, get to use it. <laughs> Ha ha, is that what you say to every lake you see? <laughs> I'm just excited to see you. <laughs> just because I'm what does it mean I'm a lake? <laughs> Killing me slowly starts playing overhead. <laughs> overhead where? <laughs> From a cloud. <laughs> cloud speakers. <laughs> Let me run into your <laughs> giant puddle. <laughs> What's a giant puddle? <laughs> Is it a puddle now? <laughs> like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Many moons go by before <laughs> the elephant enters the lake. Nobody will see me if I get inside this lake. <laughs> She shimmed her shoulders. I just need you to know that. <laughs> That's the elephant getting in the Nobody lake. Nobody will see me. <laughs> the elephant getting shimmy, in the shimmy. lake. Shimmy, Ouch. <laughs> I stepped on a crocodile tooth. Okay. That was the elephant. I said that. There are so many animals. <laughs> Penguins are flying oh. overhead. <laughs> what? <laughs> they fly? They do in this story. Next to the where did they come speaker. from? I don't know. <laughs> Antarctica. It's a long flight. They flew down. Quails join the flight as well. Rain starts to fall on the land, and it is wet. Thank now. you. Shockingly, the rain was poison, and everybody died. Ooh, that's sad. <laughs> the ghost laughed and said i'm all alone now question <laughs> was i dead all along on oh, qrstu oh damn it i already did quail <laughs> oh yeah we're that... going backwards it's fine where what you're on you okay tu umbilicus says we're abound <laughs> i'm sorry what is that word <laughs> Is that a medical terminology that I don't it's know? Multiple umbilical. It's a belly like, button. Like your umbilical cord. <laughs> okay. I did not know there was a plural form yes, of that word. Umbilical. Yes, okay. <laughs> Could have gone my whole life without knowing that word. <laughs> I don't mean the cord. <laughs> do animals have that? They do. They do okay. in this story, Lindsay. <laughs> I don't know why that's the sticking point of reality. <laughs> Vulva, exclaimed Gosh, the vampire. It. What? <laughs> yes, he made it back. <laughs> I 
<laughs> wow, said the ghost. When did you get here? <laughs> oh, here we go. So I can only think of one other word. Xylophone. Xylophone. We're playing in the background from Sorry. the cloud speaker. <laughs> You're Zero's stepping it. on my toe, said the ghost. Ghosts have toes? <laughs> ghost toes. Oh, that would hurt. Zebras, Zebras have stripes. Have stripes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking, hold on. <sighs> Zoo animals really shouldn't do drugs. Oh, that's what happened. We were on an acid trip with <laughs> at the zoo. <laughs> the zoo. Acid at the zoo. <laughs> that's what the title of this one is. Zoo animals <laughs> should not do drugs. That's it. The end. The end. That was beautiful. The trip. The trip to the zoo. It's called the trip to the... I love that. Oh, Thank you. It really was a poem. I love those stories. They're fun. Okay. It's my turn to tell you a story. I can't wait. Last month, we <laughs> promised an Appalachian cryptid. Yeah. And I have delivered. Oh, thank Yay. God. But as a caveat, it's not just in Appalachia. It's in a lot of places. So I would love to tell you about the Wampus Cat. <sighs> the Wampus Cat. The Wampus Cat. Does this sound familiar to you? Lynn Daddy Wampus? I've heard <laughs> Daddy Wampus. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because you're from North Carolina, is that way? First off, y'all realize I wasn't into spooky <laughs> stuff when I was a child, <laughs> that's right? True, that's true. I was a child when I was reading there. your Bible there. <laughs> Wait forgot. till I throw down these facts. Ooh. Ooh. A Wampus in the Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry uh. in North America, one of the four houses, was Wampus. Wait, I said that in one of my stories, I think. And here we are. Their animal was a Wampus cat. Yeah, was one of them a Pukwudgie or something? Yes. So okay. That's where that's we, where talked, we about. talked about. Yeah, there. Okay, so you were shading me for not knowing from Harry Potter. I see. I'm sorry, sorry. First off, that was Fantastic Beasts and not as familiar with them because there's no books on them. I also read that magic wands contain cores made yes. from enchanted substances, and mm-hmm. one of those core substances is wampus hair. Yeah. Ew. They like have cores of like dragon heart, unicorn hair, all these things because that's how... It's magic. Harry Potter and Voldemort, their wands share similar cores. That's how their wands are similar. Well, wampus hair is a core option, so I feel like you should yes. have known. Sorry. Thank Speaking you. Speaking of Harry Potter, I got these really cool candles that hang from the ceiling and you turn them on with a wand. I love that. I've actually been thinking it's time for me to reread the Harry Potter series again. I'm going to explain the folklore first, but... A very brief description is that the wampus is a hybrid of a mountain lion and an angry woman that roams around making creepy sounds and scaring people. That is an interesting hybrid. She's a cougar woman. Ooh. What would her sound be? Okay. (laughs) Wow. With the the eyebrow in check as well. And then a wink. Yes. I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your wampus noise? I mean, I would have done the exact same as you just did. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, maybe we'll find out later. I was waiting for your wampus noise, but okay. <laughs> I already know what the wampus noise is. I can't oh, okay. spoil it. You've listened to it? Okay. So I found the most detailed origin story from AppalachianHistory.net, but across the board, it mostly stems from Cherokee folklore, and it goes a little something like this. Also, apologies for my pronunciation. Okay. The spirit of madness is an evil demon called Iwa and had been terrorizing a village in what we now know today as North Carolina. That was the village? Uh, (laughs) The whole state was the village. It's it's within North Carolina. (laughs) Proper. (laughs) Proper. Not minor. Right. Okay. Okay. The shamans and the war chiefs had a meeting where the shamans advised the war chiefs that if they sent the braves, which is like their warriors, out to hunt and kill the Iwa, it would be the end of their tribe because the Iwa could drive men mad with one glance. So basically they're saying if you send these guys out to fight, they're going to come back mad and then we won't have any defense. But they know something had to be done, so they decided that they would send out their strongest brave to kill the demon. I bet he was brave. Their strongest brave was brave. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was called Standing Bear. Oh. And was allegedly the most respected brave in all of Cherokee Nation. 
So as he left the village, the shamans blessed him and the war chiefs gave him their best weapons and he said goodbye to his wife, Running Deer. Several weeks passed before Standing Bear came running back into the village late at night, screaming and clawing his eyes out. Ew. So his wife, Running Deer, knew that her husband would only be able to pick berries and work in the fields with the young girls and unmarried widows and no longer be able to be a husband. Oh, wow. So apparently by Cherokee law, that means he's dead Oh, to her. Bummer. And um, Running Deer was sad and she wanted revenge. Okay. Unlike whatever did this to him? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she went to the shamans who gave her a booger mask. A, a what? I'm sorry. A booger mask. Which... Mm, a Kleenex, yes. It's not. <laughs> it's not what it sounds like. <laughs> okay. It's a mask made from gourds or wood and trimmed with fur to exaggerate human features. But here's the thing. So these masks were made to make fun of... Um, the white man, because they had these exaggerated features and they did stupid stuff. And so they made these masks to be like, oh, look at me. I'm this guy. And to make fun of them. I get it. That I could see that. Mm-hmm. So what does the nose look like? Um, I think it looks like a flaccid penis. <laughs> Thank you. Looks like a bratwurst. <laughs> and there is hair on the eyebrows and around the nose. Um, that it looks very bushy eyebrows. <laughs> Just one little tuft of hair on top. <laughs> <laughs> With little holes for the eyes and holes for the mouth. But it, the really what you see is the nose. The nose is oh, there. Oh, yeah. It just, just, just really catches your attention. Just hanging out there. Yeah. So imagine running deer in this mask. So they gave her the, the booger mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mask meant to make fun of the white man and they call it a booger mask <laughs> yeah i just said all those things I know, just <laughs> processing it is made me chuckle when i very first heard of it see i had to google this this was not an opportunity to be visualized whenever i read the story <laughs> and so i thought oh well that's a lot of boogers yeah turns out it's zero boogers So they gave her the booger mask and a bobcat's face and a special black paste to rub on her body to hide not only her body, but her scent as well. Smart. She was told that the spirit of the mountain cat would stand against the Iwa, and if she is able to surprise the demon, then she's got the mountain cat spirit on her side. So she kissed her former husband on the forehead and headed out for her revenge. Many days passed before she heard a creature by a stream. As she crept towards it, she saw footprints and standing bear's breastplate. So she followed the prince along the stream and she found the demon, but the demon hadn't noticed her because she's got this booger mask and she's covered (laughs) in black paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she snuck up on it and scared it with her booger mask and her mountain lion head. (laughs) So they would see this face and like, yeah, that would not think anything of it. It would scare me though. Would it not scare you? Yes, it would scare me, yeah. startle me. But apparently it was normal. It wouldn't scare the, the demon. They're like, oh, nothing to see. It scared this demon. <gasps> and so the Iwa stumbled back into the stream, tearing at itself as the spirit of the mountain cat turned its powers back on Iwa. Running deer sprinted back to the village where she was declared the spirit talker and home protector. So now... Some say that the spirit of running deer inhabits the wampus cat as she continues her eternal mission of watching over the tribe's land to protect the people from the demons that hide in the dark. But there are other variations to the story. In one, the wampus cat is Iwa, who was a Cherokee woman who didn't trust her husband. So when he went out to hunt with a fellow warrior, she put on a mountain lion coat and went to spy on him. So the village found out, and as a punishment, the medicine medicine man forced her to wear the mountain lion skin forever, which transformed her into the wampus cat. Hmm. Another version is that of a witch who lived alone in the mountains, and at night she would turn herself into a cat and steal chickens and pigs. That's it. That's the one. But there's also a wampus presence in Idaho. That's a long ways away, okay. Yeah, and their story is different okay according to cryptids.fandom which is basically a wikipedia for cryptids they claim that the wampus cat is native to idaho and was a beaver maybe 
That's a completely different cryptid. <laughs> yeah, you gotta with this website, you really have to strap in. So <laughs> the story says that a trapper's dog surprised a beaver far from the water, where there was nothing for the beaver to climb except for a tree. So the beaver climbed the tree. But since beavers don't climb trees, it became a wampus cat. What? <laughs> I have no further explanation. I don't get it. Yep. <sighs> it just is. That's okay. all. Because yeah. the beaver can't climb trees. If no. it climbs a tree, it's a wampus cap. But let's move on to what we're all here for, which is the description. Oh, thank God. It's, or this I guess, was just a warm-up. This was a warm-up. I guess I should say descriptions because there are several. Okay. The wampus cat is sometimes described as a half cat, half dog. <laughs> cat which, dog. Which end is cat and which is dog? Um, the cat is on the cat side and the dog is on the dog side. Okay. It's a cat dog. Dog cat. <laughs> In Washington state, it's said that it sheds its whiskers, the white ones during the day and the black ones at night. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's sometimes described as a water panther with black fur that is black as dusk. Looks like a black panther with vampire fangs. He, it, he or she. They. They look like the prowler at the Worlds of Fun. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's described as having glowing yellow eyes that can pierce through the people's soul and drive them insane. I feel like my soul has been pierced. <laughs> the sharp teeth. So I'm saying they're vampire fangs. Look at them. <laughs> there was a book in 1939 called Fearsome Critters, where the wampus cat is depicted as a bipedal cat the size of a Maine Coon, which is a cat. And those aren't very big. Can big cats. Imagine? Well, they are, but they're not like tiger big no they're just large for house cats right but can you imagine a little a big house cat walking around its hind legs no it's got tufted ears the <laughs> tail of a lion wow sharp claws does he wear a monocle no but he has a comical smile <laughs> he's a, a distinguished gentleman <laughs> wait for this Bow tie. he's got a right forearm that telescopes like a reacher so like one of those toy arms where you pull the trigger oh. and it extends like a lattice Go, go gadget arm? Exactly. Oh. oh. Whoa. Yeah, it is a gadget arm. That is an interesting drawing. That looks very mechanical. He was blessed with a forearm that could reach things. Punch the bird. So he's using it to catch the eagle, which is what they use that arm for. Do they okay. eat the eagle? Obviously. Oh, well, let me tell you. Okay. If the wampus is hungry, it eats the whole eagle. Gotcha. Okay. But if it's feeling playful, it just picks out all the tail feathers and then lets him go. Oh, <laughs> poor eagle. <laughs> then the eagle can't shake his tail feathers no more. Oh, do you think he gets made fun of by his eagle friends? Yeah. <laughs> now, when there are wild turkeys and eagles, the wampus gets confused because then they combine and they become a turk eagle. Oh, that sounds delicious for Thanksgiving. And and I quote, the wampus cat cannot tell them apart because it cannot spell. What? what? I also have no further explanation. <laughs> it's because there they all wear the badges. <laughs> badges that just say, Excuse me, sir, turkey. can you... Don't or tell eel. me what you are, but spell it for me, please. Hi, I'm a turkey. <laughs> Hi. Hi, my name is Turkey. <laughs> I don't understand the logic here. Cryptid. Would you say cryptids.net? Cryptid.fandom. Cryptid.fandom. Cryptid I don't understand anymore. You know, this is the, the cut down version. If you feel like having a great time on a Friday night, <laughs> you should just go to that website and read it. I have done I've, that. I've been to that website <laughs> yes. for my Mothman. <laughs> uh -huh. um, the glare from their eyes can start forest fires under a full moon. Oh, they're Smokey the Bear's worst nightmare. Ooh. Their footprints are only visible in solid rock. Yeah. Wow. What? They just melt. That's unfortunate. <laughs> the wampus howl on a lonely night can curdle sourdough. <laughs> Well, have I got some sourdough that needs curdling? <laughs> this Ew. story sounds like it was translated from one language. Yes, I'm so confused. To, like from English to some other language and then back to English. Yes. It might have been. And here we are. Here we are. Okay, we're going with sourdough. it. They can't Like spell. it was supposed to be <laughs> cream or milk or something. It was translated back to sourdough. Specifically. <laughs> I was thinking like blood curdling screams. <laughs> nope. Sourdough. Nope, sourdough. Wow. That's where we went. We went to bread. That 
must mean it's different. Okay. It can change its voice from a howl to that of a banshee. Mm, banshees. To the bleat of a goat. <laughs> don't ask me to do it. I can't. Okay, I want to hear all of them. What's a howl? Uh, what? No, don't make me do it. I can't. Please. I can't do the goat. Please. I'll not. do the goat. For me. No, no, no. I'm asking for a howl first. Ow. <laughs> Beautiful. I need a banshee. Thank That's you. beautiful. Please, the bleat of a goat. <laughs> <laughs> she was waiting for that. <laughs> oh, no, you don't get to leave this chat without trying no, at least one. No, you gotta try one. one of those three. Pick one, surprise us. Matt. Oh, oh, it was like a baby goat. <laughs> <laughs> a kid. <laughs> it was the least amount of commitment she could do. <laughs> well, but the lore of Appalachia is a little more consistent. So the wampus there is described as a large creature with a bobcat's face a body that's a mix of a cat and a human with elongated claws and fangs and glowing yellow eyes bright enough to be able to see in the darkness of the wilderness. Eyewitness reports describe a creature with a muscular feline body in a dark matted fur along with a curvy tail. It's said to run erect on all fours, <laughs> but some <laughs> accounts fours. report that the creature has six legs. Uh, oh. Witnesses describe feelings of unease and an overwhelming sense of being watched. It's rumored to appear at dusk, twilight, or dawn, specifically. There's no running away from this cat with six legs. No. It's over for you. And a long tail. Unless it only runs on its back, too. Oh, like, no. Oh. <laughs> it just has its other forearms out to the side. <laughs> <laughs> The wampus has several supernatural abilities, one being the ability to emit spine-chilling screams as a way of attracting prey and warding off threats. It curdles the sourdough when it screams. Ooh. Right. It also has exceptional speed, agility, and stealth, allowing it to navigate dense forests undetected. It can shapeshift or become invisible, making it near impossible to track or capture. The wampus cat has been blamed for killing livestock in the Appalachian and southern areas, and it was first spotted at the beginning of the 19th century, and sightings continue to this day. So she's like the, the troops, kills the livestock. Yes. Other names include the galley wampus. Apparently that's what it's called in Missouri. I called it the daddy wampus. Maybe I'd heard galley wampus and remembered it as daddy wampus. Yeah, the da daddy wampus. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't ever call with that again. I'd appreciate that. Too late. The Wampus Cat is the mascot for at least six schools across America and a college baseball team out of North Carolina. Do they have six legs on their mascot? Some have four, some have six. I would choose one with six legs. You would? Yeah, because it's like you have extra arms if you have a lot of groceries. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be a witch. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yep. Or wampus. Oh, I would choose which, but if I had to be a four-legged or a six-legged wampus, I'd choose six. I think I'd choose four. I gotta blend in. Can I pick any cryptid to be my mascot? No, I need you to know if you want to be a four-legged or a six-legged <laughs> wampus. Six. Okay. Okay, and what would your cryptid be for your mascot? Any of them? Yeah. Ghost, ghost pants. The pants. Ghost in University is the home of the fighting ghost pants. I mean, there it is. He's we were the looking cutest, for it. He's the cutest thing we've ever seen. He is cute. Look at him. Okay, well, that's the wampus cat. Thank Daddy you. Wampus. No. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> yes. I hate it. <laughs> um. Thank you so much, guys. We will post a picture <laughs> of the wampus so you can see what we are looking at. <laughs> and the booger mask. The booger mask. We, we will post a Unless picture I for that. I in I'm trouble for posting. Sorry already. Pornographic <laughs> images. It's, it is a gourd, okay? <laughs> oh, my gourd. Are you a gourd or are you just happy to Look see me? at his <laughs> nose. <laughs> yes, to all that. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in this week to our cryptid smorgasbord episode. You can always find us at thetipsyghost.com with our socials linked from there. Or send us an email at thetipsyghost at gmail.com. Please give us a five-star rating and a great review anywhere you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it, and it really does help. All right. Thanks so much, guys. We'll catch you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.